More than 20 years of having been diagnosed with poly polycystic ovarian syndrome myself and treating hundreds of thousands of patients for reproductive health. I can say that this conversation is one that provides and um, brings a lot of questions when it comes to how do you effectively treat PCOS? How can you cure it? The reality is that you can't cure it. The, the truth is that it must be managed. However, the good news is that it absolutely can to the point where it appears that you've never actually had polycystic ovarian syndrome to begin with, or PCOS for short. So I've done a couple of videos about how do you diagnose it, what is it about, how does it affect fertility, and today we're talking about how to effectively treat it. Now, the actual effective treatment that we use in my clinic is based on herbal medicines, but we have to leverage optimum health across the spectrum. So what do I mean by that? What I mean is that your exposures matter. And so what are exposures? You know, which exposures matter? The variety, the whole spectrum of them, from what you put onto your body, into your body, and what you're surrounded by, and all of the things that are in between. So from a mental health perspective, you know the the thing the things that affect your health your well-being your stress levels all of that is going to make a difference um believe it or not because your body's ability to balance itself and to find homeostasis will be dependent upon what's happening in here and much more but the reality is that in order to get quick results in terms of PCOS treatment, there are three things that I usually really focus on to get fast results and to get results fast. <laughs> you know, they're kind of not exactly the same thing. So the thing about it is that, as I was saying before, exposure matters, exposures matter. And so what you want to be looking at is what are you putting into your body? So your food, your drinks, the types of chemicals that are laced in to your foods and drinks, you know, all of those things will make a difference. In the book, Infertility Breakthrough, uh, I think it's chapter 12, I talk about, there's a whole chapter, yes, it is chapter 12, Eat Your Way to Parenthood, and in that chapter, I talk about everything you need to know to address PCOS and any other fertility or reproductive condition when it comes to food and how you should eat. Suffice to say, and there's videos that I've done on this before as well in five minute segments, so go ahead and have a look at that. But the book is available on Spotify, free of charge for you to listen to, so you could listen to that literally straight after this. And, um, or you can grab a copy in any bookseller. Um, it's available on Kindle and, and books and everything else. But just go to the free version on Spotify, you can listen to it and you will get all the information that you need. So the key aspect here is that eating your way to parenthood is about making sure that your food is as unprocessed as possible. There's a lot of distinction and nuance that I talk about in the book. So go ahead and have a look at that or have a look at other segments that I've done on food and you'll be able to get more information about it. But what you put in your mouth from the types of carbohydrates to the types of protein to you know essentially the chemicals and additives flavorings and all of the other things are going to make a difference one of the things that we've seen and this is research done in the department of nutrition at harvard is that when processed foods particularly trans fats uh in processed foods are consumed by women with anovulation it increases the um, problem increases uh, the inability of the body to ovulate by 73 percent so it really does negatively impact fertility and of course that applies hugely in pcos because we already know that anovulation is one of the problems that women with pcos often have irregular cycles or lack of ovulation. So addressing and eating in the way that I suggest in the book and you know in all the other materials is going to be critical. Fresh unprocessed foods as much as possible, basing your meals on vegetables and protein, that's going to be one of the key ways. Another exposure that matters greatly is your activity, your level of exercise, and especially the specific type 
of purpose for your exercise now of course I always say if you haven't start like if you are a couch potato you don't want to be going running a marathon um, you know in a week and you know I kind of I say that just to give you a visual I'm not saying you're a couch potato and and certainly most people you know have an understanding of the importance of moving and movement for your health and here it applies greatly and I wouldn't even recommend running for PCOS you know really what the research indicates these days is that muscle building and I certainly can advocate for that on a personal level having been you know diagnosed with PCOS at the age of 18 and for many years having irregular cycles and then starting to train with weightlifting is the thing that completely changed like my my cycles now are totally regular literally on the day whereas I've had periods of time where I had two years without actually having a cycle so and the research you know really does back this up that weight training makes a huge difference to the ability of the body to self-regulate when it comes to hormonal levels hormonal balance insulin and blood glucose and of course reducing and adjusting and, and supporting the body to uh, manage the symptoms of PCOS so weights training is going to be a great thing getting started there would be fantastic there are lots of resources but um, really what you want to be doing is and actually probably exercise and weights training is another video that I could do here um, to really go through this in detail because we are out of time in our five minutes but you know what I will say is that what we want to make sure of is that we really are building muscle and progressive overload is going to be a critical key to doing that and there are lots of ways of progressively overloading that is not exactly about increasing the amount of weight although that is one aspect or one way to do that I'll come back and I'll talk more about it but begin begin very very lightweight you know kind of get some instructions there's lots of great information there's also some terrible information online but <laughs> that's a whole other another story um, I'll, I promise I will come back and do more on this topic because it is an important topic in terms of how to exercise but weights training is going to be a key factor and then of course in my clinic we use herbal medicines and that is one of the things that I find makes the hugest difference you do not want to self prescribe in fact there is a, also a chapter in the book talking about supplements and that is something there you go chapter 9 something that I would highly recommend you take a look at because supplements really need to be prescribed specifically for you it has to be personalized it has to be customized and it has to be with the exact focus and outcome that you're wanting to create in mind so those are the three major things what you eat how you eat what you put on and around your body the type of exercise and movement that you do and getting a practitioner to support you with the right prescription for you more than happy to have a discussion further and of course understand more about your situation and see if we can be of assistance there's a link underneath this video where you can uh, schedule a complimentary consultation or conversation so that we can go over it hope that helps and until next time bye for now